Hola chicas, welcome to my bedroom today. We are gonna be having some girl chat a la Café con Dulce style, but we're not drinking coffee. We are drinking ceremonial cacao. So I would love if you guys can help me come up with the name for um, this series where it's just kind of like Café con Dulce, where it's all about girl chat, answering your questions, and just kind of talking about life. Um, but, I don't want to use the name Café con Dulce anymore. I mean, I honestly do, but I don't drink coffee, so it doesn't really... I mean, I drink it in the morning sometimes, but I, I want to have more of like a open heart conversations with cacao, right? But what would be a cool name? If you guys can help me come up with a really cool name for any time that I do this kind of video with um, ceremonial cacao. Because cacao con dulce... What do you guys think about that? Cacao con dulce. I don't know. It just doesn't really roll off the tongue that well. But anyways, so I have the cacao kind of running through my body right now. I just finished filming a video on how I prepare ceremonial cacao. There's so many different ways, but I wanted to share with you guys just like a vlog style of me making it um, to give you guys some ideas for those of you that are interested in working with this beautiful sacred plant medicine. So let me take a little sip so I can have more of it just running through my heart and we can really have an open heart conversation today about some big kind of paradigm shifts that I've been experiencing and messages that I received that I feel really called to sit here in my bedroom and share with you guys. Um, I hadn't worked with this plant medicine for maybe half a year. It had been quite some time and something just told me like make yourself a nice cup of cacao and it just gave me the sense of just feeling very nurtured. A key word that has been popping up for me a lot has been nurturing. Nurture. And I feel like as grown women, that is an energy that we don't often get. Or if you're a grown man, not a lot of people expect you to be nurtured. Um, you're not expected to be nurtured because you're a grown person and you're an adult and now you're 30 and like you just, no, you just nurture babies. So you nurture the elderly or you nurture um, little animals. But like you and me, like we're not getting nurtured, right? So. I just came to realize that I just really need that nurturing energy and so cacao for me just is it feels like I'm with my mom it feels like I'm with my mama Maria and I'm like snuggled into her chest like that honestly my grandma's hugs just that's what the spirit of cacao makes me feel like if I am with my grandma or with my mom like on their chest you know like just being held like like a baby almost and so that's what I've been eating a lot lately. And whenever I work with this beautiful sacred plant medicine is when I'm able to really open up my heart and have these beautiful moments of divine messages just pouring through. And I'm able to see the world in a different way or have a different perspective in, in, in a situation that I'm going, going through. And so the message that I wanted to talk to you guys about today was just like, something that I've talked about a lot before here on my channel, but the importance of really listening to those inner callings that are often something that are, is being poured into our hearts. And a lot of the times we feel like they're really insignificant and it's not something that we should really pursue or especially here in today's society where you are told that you just need to focus on one thing if you want to be successful or you know our lives unfortunately like if you're a mom if you're someone who is just surviving right that's kind of like a luxury or it feels like a luxury to sit down and even contemplate on listening to these inner callings that seem like mm, you know, maybe that's just something that I want to do for fun. Why would I even pursue that? I need to focus on making sure that my family is fed. I need to go to work. I need to make sure that our life is taken care of because all of the uncertainty with the state of the planet, um, just being on survival mode, it's something that a lot of us are going through. You know, we just want to make sure that the decisions and the choices that we make on a day to day basis are the right choices. The calling for, and the only way that I can relate this 
kind of information is by sharing my own personal story. So for me, you guys know that I talk about meditation a lot because that's something that I started. I started an enrichment program and then I signed up for the teacher uh, certification program to become a primordial sound meditation teacher. And then through that, and this was in October of last year, and then through that, that opened up my mind to the science of yoga and the philosophies and the ancient uh, ways of living. Like a teacher training program to me just solidifies my practice. And I know that I'm also better able to understand what I'm talking about or what I share with you guys on here. And it also deepens my own practice if I know how to teach it, right? So I never think about it like, how am I gonna make money and this and that, because that is very limiting to me and that is not something that is guaranteed and if I'm gonna do a program or be certified in anything that I choose to be certified, um, the money is just never an objective. You know what I mean? I feel like if that's not the objective, somehow, you know, Jesus, my higher power, Things are just moved and elements are moved in a way that I am always somehow supported um, when you follow your heart. And so I wanted to share with you guys that like I was reading this book and this is how crazy this life works, okay? This is why I want you guys to follow your calling. Like whatever calling as crazy as it might sound and as just like, out of the, like, why would I, do, like, this is not what I do for a living. Why would I take up a salsa profession? Why would I become a professional salsa dancer? Like, why would I do that? Like that, I am 40 years old. That's just not me. Everybody's been like salsa dancing since they were 15 years old or younger. And like, here I come. Like, no. Okay. Whatever you want to do, you, you better do it. And this is why. Because there's a reason why you have that calling to do that. And like, life is so unexpected. We don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow. And so like, why not take advantage of all of these little callings? It doesn't mean that you have to monetize it. You don't have to monetize your skills or whatever it is that you're learning. You never know where that is going to lead you. That's why it's important to follow those callings because they will lead you. That is your soul leading you. A lot of the times we work from our brain, right? We're working from our brain up here. We're very superficial. We're just like very straightforward, very practical. And if we don't see it, we don't believe it. And so we need concrete, like we need a path. And that's what creates a lot of anxiety and stress within us as well, that we don't really know the path and we want to know like, where, where am I going, you know? But if you follow your soul, if you follow your intuition and these inner callings, they are leading you to your path. Even though you have no idea where it's going, it is leading you in the right direction. And that is what I know for sure. So I was reading this book that I got as a gift over the holidays, and it's called Kingler, A Story of Honor and Hope. It's a children's book that, honestly, I was going to donate um, because my children were not picking up the book and reading it, or at least Isaac wasn't. I almost got rid of what is now one of my favorite books of the entire planet. I cried so many tears with this book, guys, and just, Give me a second. I'm going to bring this whole story around. There's a reason why I'm bringing this book up. <laughs> so just stay with me. So, Klinger, a story of honor and hope in this beautiful horse, right? Um, written by Betsy Beard. So this story, and spoiler alert if you haven't re read it, but trust me, if, once, if you read it, you're most likely going to shed a few tears. So the story starts off basically uh, Kingler. Is this horse, his parents were telling him since he was born that he's a very special horse. You're very special, Klinger. You're going to do great things in this world. And they were horses that were going to be trained to become racing horses, race horses. But unfortunately, Klinger was very slow. And he was strong, but he was slow. And so he was not cut out to be a race horse. And he was confused as to why his mom and dad were telling him that he was very special. And he's like, I thought I was going to be one of the best race horses out there in the country, but I'm so slow. Even the smaller horses are faster than me. You know, what's going on, mom? Why are you saying that about me? And so unfortunately they had to sell Klinger and he had to leave home and leave his mom and dad behind. 
So come to find out, Klinger then arrives in Arlington, Virginia, in Fort Myer, right? Yeah, Fort Myer. And he is now a part of the Kaisen platoon. And the Kaisen platoon is a platoon of soldiers, men and women, who have the honor and the privilege of being the soldiers who create funerals and ceremonies for our fallen heroes. And um, they're they take the casket, the horses pull the casket that is draped with the American flag that takes our fallen heroes to their final resting place, to the Arlington National Cemetery. Now you have been chosen, now you have been chosen to join the United States Army. Wow, and he's like, what? What does that mean? Is this something special? But before he was able to kind of join the ranks of these beautiful prestige horses with the men and women in their beautiful fitted class A uniforms. Um, he ended up getting a dog tag, and but he had to be trained so he would be able to uh, be a part of the ceremonies for our fall, fallen heroes. And here you have this beautiful photo of our soldiers and it just made me appreciate them so much and all the work that Kaisen Platoon does. It's just absolutely beautiful. Here they are pulling the wagon. And oh, this part really got me. This is a little boy and a little girl. Um, and they have this program. Um, they have this beautiful program called TAPS, which stands for Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. So in Memorial Day, they actually bring the children of the men and women who died in war. They bring them in and they have the best therapist. They also do therapy with the horses. So the horses provide emotional comfort. And just to have, oh my gosh, it gave me chills. I couldn't even read the story, guys, because I, like, I was shedding tears at just thinking about like how Klinger thought that he was not a special horse anymore because he was going to be a race horse. But little did he know that his real mission on this planet was to be of service for the fallen, our fallen heroes. And he was the horse that provided emotional support for the children who lost their dad or their mom or both. And he had the honor of also looking so sharp and just so amazing and just being a part of the ceremony that takes the casket to its final resting place. And it just gave me chills and I'm like, damn, if, when I was in the army, like I would have loved to have that job, like to be like I, it's, this thought even came into my head of like, I should I join the army again? Like I would love to be a part of that platoon, you know, and it was just such a beautiful story. So it got me thinking of like the PTSD that I have been struggling with um, for a long time and also other mental illnesses that I've also been struggling for a big, big part of my life. It got me thinking, what is it that I can do? Like the thought, like honestly, this thought just came into my heart. And I said, I just said to Jesse, because I was telling Jesse about the story the next day, because I read it to Isaac at night. And the next day I was like, babe, you have to like check the story out. It's so, so beautiful. And um, I just told him like, what if I volunteer my time to teach meditation to our veterans who are struggling with PTSD? I've done a lot of work with veterans before, um, but I've never really been involved with like people and veterans. Like I've done things for programs, but I wanna be more involved. And they have all of these really great programs like yoga that they offered me um, when I called into the VA hospital for just mental help. And they offered me like, hey, we have yoga for our veterans. And I was like, hmm, this just, this thought came to mind, I'm like, what if the reason that I was being called to learn to teach meditation, because someone, something told me to enroll in the teacher training program and invest my money and time into learning that. I just had the idea that I would love to be able to provide that service. And if it wasn't for that inner calling, I don't think I would be like, I can offer something of healing for soldiers veterans who are struggling with PTSD, life after war, life after the military. And there's so many veterans that are suffering with mental illnesses because of the military. And it's something that is very close to my family, like my husband, myself, um, have dealt with that as well. And I know 
a lot of people that I've worked with before, even though like when you say that you have PTSD, it's kind of like not something that you are, you know, you're not really fully supported if you say you have PTSD while you're in active duty military, from my experience. So a lot of soldiers also kind of hide that they have any kind of problem because you want to be like the tough soldier who went to war and you weren't affected, you know? But the reality is that so many of us experienced a lot of traumatic stuff, you know? And uh, yeah, I, I just, it was just a big aha moment for me because I was, I just feel so called to do that now. And I'm just so grateful that I have been listening to all of these little callings. And I know that there's people who also um, have been a part of my life. I'm not really a part of my life anymore, but at one point when I felt like um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and before I started following these callings that's why like I want to go to Guatemala and become a, a cacao practitioner why not how cool would it be for me to do circles and really know how to give a cacao ceremony to women like that would be so awesome so any little calling that I have I'm gonna go ahead and listen to it and I would love if you guys did the same thing guys I am not ready to let you go I really wish that you were like right here with me right now so we can continue this conversation uh, but unfortunately, I gotta go because the battery is overheating and um, I know I already kept you here for a long time. So hopefully you were like, you know, maybe doing something else while you were listening to this. Either way, I cannot wait to talk to you guys and read all of your comments. I read absolutely every single comment. With that being said, have a blessed and beautiful day, ladies. I can't wait to see you in the comments section, and I will see you in my next video as well. Have a blessed and beautiful day, and I can't wait to talk to you soon.